Hey, what's up fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily and today I have two big finished objects to share with you. So if you saw my last video, it was a frog it or finish it because I had a big, big pile of whips or at least the biggest pile of whips I've ever had. And I really wanted to go through them, figure out which I wanted to continue with and which maybe weren't giving anymore uh, and just kind of clear them out of my pile and repurpose the yarn or prepare the yarn to be repurposed. But today I wanted to give my two most recent finished objects some time to shine. So without further ado, let's jump into it. My first finished object is my Cami number no. seven by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And now before I actually talk more about this project, on one of my slightly older videos now, a video I posted toward the end of August, uh, my fall knitting plans video, uh, somebody had left a comment asking about My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I thought, it was important that I share that comment or that question as well as what my reply was here just so that we can continue the conversation so that my position is like really transparent I guess. So the commenter had said some some quite nice things about just the video in general uh, but said I was just wondering about your opinion regarding my favorite things knitwear and her sizing. I watched your stash tour from earlier this year, loved it by the way, and you mentioned her quite often, so I just wanted to check if you knew that her sizing was awful and how you feel about that. Thanks. I really appreciated this commenter's gentle approach to the question, uh, but I, I'm going to just basically read what I replied to the commenter, because you can see it on the video anyway, right? So I said thank you for your question. I do know that her sizing is not good and I do admittedly have some conflicting thoughts. Ultimately, my knitting practice is for myself and a personal priority for me is getting a low cost per wear. In other words, I want to make things that I will love and get use out of. My favorite things knitwear has a style that resonates with me and designs that I cannot really find elsewhere with more size inclusivity, specifically with respect to the camisoles but certainly not with respect to like a basic raglan or a drop shoulder sweater. This is why I choose to knit her patterns. However, as someone who chooses to share my knitting on social media, I recognize that there is a certain expectation of responsibility that is had of me compared to folks who don't share online and knit what they please. I know that however limited I have influence and I want to be responsible with it. However, I am investing my personal time and money into my craft. So as much as I feel I ought to be transparent and responsible to my audience, I owe it to myself to make things that I will love and wear. It's true that size inclusivity was not as close to the forefront of my thinking when I filmed that stash tour as it is now. So I have made efforts to share more information about my own measurements, about size availability for patterns that I knit, uh, and sometimes smaller designers. To that end, I think it is possible to support diverse designers and designers creating size inclusive patterns while also knitting my favorite things knitwear patterns. By no means do I think my perspective is correct or most agreeable, but I admit that it's a conclusion I feel most at peace with Continuing these conversations is very important, and I will certainly address this in a future video. So that, that was basically what I said back to, to the commenter, and I still stand by everything that I said there. But since then, um, my favorite things knitwear has continued to put out patterns, some with not good size inclusivity, but she did recently announce that she's going to be pushing back the release date of her next sweater, so that rather than three sizes, it can be tested in eight sizes. And so I think this is this is good. This is important. This is why we need to have these conversations as opposed to just saying, you know, don't knit this designer's patterns. Don't do like, like cancel culture. I, I don't want to kind of reinforce that. I want to 
give designers opportunities to grow and respond to the needs and the wants and the values of the knitting community. So I'm going to leave that there for now. Um, I'm going to leave that there for now and I'm going to talk about what I actually knit. <laughs> So as I mentioned, this is Cami number seven by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I have a, I'm five foot eight almost. I weigh about 157 pounds. That means I wear US size eight or 10, depending on the garment of commercially made clothing or size medium. And I have a 37 inch bust and I think about a 29 or a 30 inch waist. Usually for most designers patterns, I knit the third size or a size medium, depending on the way they categorize their sizing. But I have found from knitting cami number two, number five, and number four, that the underarm hole of my favorite things knitwear camisoles in the size medium is often more deep than I would like it to be, even though circumference wise, everything fits. So I decided to knit this in a size small in the hopes that that solution, like that would be a solution to my underarm hole issue. I also chose to knit a size small because I used Dururam Natura's Antigone yarn, which is 100% linen. This is the colorway Prunel, which is like a mushroomy brownie kind of purple color. I think it's so beautiful, like the drape of this fabric is absolutely gorgeous. And so while the pattern was written for a wool silk blend on three millimeter needles, with linen yarn you really need to drop down in needle size to match gauge, which meant I had to go down to a 2.25 millimeter needle and I was still off gauge. My fabric was still too um, big. So if I had knit the medium, I would have been just like in a baggy top that would not have fit well. So I decided to drop down to the size small to knit with the linen yarn. I didn't want to drop down even further in needle size to meet gauge because by the time I was reaching the end, by the time I finished this bust shaping, uh, the fabric was becoming quite heavy and difficult to work with. Um, like linen yarn is just tough on the hands and being on really tiny needles as well with the weight of the project was strenuous on both my hands and the needles actually because they were fixed circulars uh, where the wooden part meets the cable looked like it was starting to bend and I was actually concerned I'd break it at some point but anyway going down to the size small worked out quite well for me and I ended up wet blocking this so I soaked it for about 10 minutes in lukewarm water. I squeezed out all of the water. I did stretch it out a little bit widthwise, and then I hung it to dry so that it really would kind of draw down the underarm because before blocking, it was really high up, but after blocking, it sits now in a really good place for me with the types of undergarments I like to wear. So this is the camisole on. As you can see, I did knit it quite long. Here's my belly button, here's my hip bones, and the hem of the top even goes past my hip bones. So this is not something I would consider cropped. This is absolutely full length, on me at least. And the reason for that is I didn't know how much this was gonna grow. And previously when I've knit camisoles, I've become impatient, especially with the top down camisoles and just knit them a little more cropped than I want them to be. So I'm actually quite pleased with the length of this. It tucks in nicely to trousers and to skirts. I wore it on the first day of school and I, I'm just very much, very much enjoying this. One thing I also want to discuss about the pattern is that it has been marketed specifically as a bra strap friendly pattern. A lot of other camisole patterns out there either have like really, really wide straps that are like stockinette with an I-cord edge and they still kind of roll in a bit like, um, like the Vegas top is like that. Um, and I think similar tops to the Vegas top with better size inclusivity like drinks on the patio 
and uh, I think it's called The Bather's Top. I'll link both of those and maybe also pop in photos. They basically just have wide stockinette straps, uh, but so they either have that or they have really thin eye cord straps that aren't particularly bra friendly. Now some folks are okay to have their bra strap showing. I personally prefer not to. So when I saw that this was supposed to be bra strap friendly, I was like, okay, great. It's beautiful. So I'll probably knit it anyway, because I love my cami number fours. Um, but I thought to myself, you know, just because you have a wide strap doesn't mean it's bra strap friendly. For example, with my Vegas top, I believe I still need to switch my bras to be racer back as opposed to straight back because you may still see like the bra strap doesn't line up perfectly with the garment strap. So that was the true test. And I do believe that this is actually bra strap friendly. As I said, I wore it on the first day of school and at my particular school on the first day, uh, there's an assembly where they welcome all the new students and the new teachers and we have to sit on the stage at the school. So I was like, this is this is the true test. If I'm sitting on the stage in this and I feel comfortable and confident that nothing's going to show, then we have a bra strap friendly pattern. So I do think this is and even from the back like it. It sits up quite high in the back compared to the front and even then I still don't have this is my breastbone but there's no like cleavage showing. I think my necklaces sit nicely with it and as I said the underarm depth on me is just this is perfect. So I'm just gonna keep this on because I'm quite comfortable. I was getting warm <laughs> in my sweater but this is the cami number no. seven by my favorite things knitwear. Now I probably will knit this pattern again because it's very wearable for me as just generally what my personal style is and what I like to wear in my professional life. I have some knitting for all of pure silk that I'd like to try out with this pattern. Probably also knit a small with that yarn because my experience with the pure silk is that it does grow quite a bit uh, once it's been blocked and once you start wearing the item. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very pleased with it. I don't know that I would knit with the Antigone yarn again. It is beautiful, beautiful yarn. It works up so, so nicely. I think having a fully linen knitted garment is really practical for me living where I do in Ontario where we do get all the seasons. So in the summertime on its own it'll be light and airy and breathable but in the wintertime I can layer it with blazers and cardigans and all of the things. But because it was so strenuous on my hands I don't know, I'd have to do a lot of thinking to decide to use this yarn again. That being said, most of the camisoles from My Favorite Things Knitwear are like really fast when you're doing the shaping up here and then the body, because it's such a small gauge, feels like it takes forever. And this is like a common refrain amongst folks who have knit these kinds of camisoles. Like, it's a lot of knitting. So that could have also been just like part of it not necessarily just the yarn and the needles. It, it was a combination of factors. Um, but there are also other linen yarns out there that I'm interested to try. So if you feel very strongly about the Antigone and you really love how it looks, it's kind of like a buyer beware type of situation. They do have a lot of beautiful colors as well. Um, but yeah, it might also be difficult to find this yarn actually because I don't think when I went to the knitting loft to purchase this, I was talking with Bruna, who is the owner there, and she was saying how um, Dererum Natura is putting limits on how much of Antigone in particular they can supply to their vendors because um, the French linen growing season this past year wasn't great. And so the limit on the raw natural resources has put a limit on how much can be produced. Uh, and Dererum Natura is sort of built on this idea of knowing the provenance, provenance, knowing where your yarn, basically knowing where the fiber comes from and sustainable small production scale practices. So if you want linen, 
you can't find Antigone. Uh, you could look at things like the Camaros. Uh, they have um, they have a chain net linen yarn, and similarly, Knit Picks has their Lindy chain, which is a linen um, chain chainette style yarn that you might be interested in trying. Uh, but otherwise, I think Knit Picks Cotlin is DK, in which case it wouldn't work for this. Anywho, I think. I'm done talking about this pattern now and I'm going to move on. My next finished object, um, I feel like you folks have been absolutely loving, which really pleases me because it came out exactly how I wanted it to. This is my Louvre sweater by Petite Knits. I have a lot of things to share about this. First thing is, this was the first time I actually did tubular cast on because a lot of the other sweaters that I have knit, the bottom up ones, um, well, how many bottom ups have I done? I think I've actually only done one bottom up. I did this, I did Sari Nordland's Monica Geller tee. That's bottom up, but she just calls for a loose long tail cast on, which I actually like the look of. I think it has like a nice, clean, sharp edge look to it, as opposed to like the rolling of the tubular cast on. Um, but everything else I've done that's been top down has been like a folded neck, so I've never needed tubular cast on. So this was my first time doing a tubular cast on, and I think it came out quite good. Once everything's blocked and it's all said and done, I, I guess there's like, there's not really even there's a little bit of rippling, but really not much that it causes an issue. So I was really proud of that. I also really like how you transition straight from the ribbing into knitting the body, as opposed to some other sweater patterns where you either sew down the neckband or you pick up the neckband and then knit it once everything else is done. Because by having that just immediate transition, when this is on, the weight of the sweater kind of pulls down and opens up the neckline, which I think is a very flattering and, well, like, opening look. Um, I grew up dancing and I grew up doing ballet, so I feel very strongly about, like, the beauty and the femininity of just, like, the upper torso. So, anyway, I really like that. I've mentioned this in the past, I really like a deep underarm for sweaters. I don't want fabric like up in my underarm. And so with all of the petite knit raglan patterns I have knit, I did champagne cardi in the winter, like in January, and then uh, the cumulus blouse February, March. With all of these raglan styles, I have added raglan increase rows to widen the body and deepen the underarm. So I did that with this. I ended up adding four stitches in total. So one raglan increase round, I think, or maybe it was eight stitches. I did one extra raglan round. I'll have to check my notes. Um, that I don't know was like absolutely necessary, but I was just kind of like, that's the thing I do, so I'm gonna do it. So I did that, but a modification I did make was for the sleeves. Another thing that I have to do with the petite knit sweater patterns is lengthen the sleeves. And so you can see that this is a tapered sleeve, it sort of decreases from the underarm toward the cuff, but you'll notice here, my rate of decreasing increased. So I knit until I had done one less than the number of repeats that the pattern called for. And then I knit the next repeat, I knit two more repeats, but I decreased twice as fast, if that makes sense. So you can see there's more of a dramatic taper toward the sleeve so that the sleeve would really fit around my wrist more snugly um, and I honestly needed the length so when I knit pre-blocking the sleeve was ending like right at the edge of my wrist and then after blocking it kind of comes up to my thumb joint which I really like it has this oversized and relaxed without swallowing me whole kind of feel to it that I really really like 
I also knit this a little bit longer than what the pattern called for because as I was knitting it, I felt like the body was kind of lumpy and bumpy and the waist ribbing was like cinching in at my hips and then the fabric around my belly was kind of bulging out and I didn't like how that looked and I was getting quite nervous um, that I wasn't going to have that like loose, oversized, relaxed look that Petite Knit has in her project photos. And I did end up posting on Instagram as a story. I was like, does this yarn, this is Knit Picks palette, I'll talk about that in a minute. I was like, does this yarn grow a lot or am I just going to have to like stretch this a lot when I block it? And it was kind of like a mix of responses. I was like, you know what, just trust the process. Blocking has always saved the day in the end. So I trusted the process. I did knit it a little bit longer so that I could stretch it out width wise and not lose the like hip length that I really wanted in the end. And I think it worked out. So this is what we have. And so you can see I did end up with a good amount of positive ease. Here's the underarm of the sweater. Here's my natural armpit. So I think I did end up achieving that sort of oversized, loose, relaxed fit that I was going for. And here's what I meant about sort of the collar opening up over the shoulders. I think it's really, really flattering. Now this yarn is iconic. Everybody seems to be loving this yarn. This is Knit Picks Palette in the colorway Iris Heather, which as you can tell is this gorgeous purple with pinks and blues. And it has this overall warm kind of undertone to it, which for me is really important because I like purple, I like blue, but I do look better in slightly warmer toned colors or slightly dusty muted colors. So when I started looking for yarn for this project, well, really, I had this idea that I just wanted like a nice pastel-y kind of purple, like lilac-y. I don't really even know how to describe it, but I just had this idea of like a soft purple sweater around the springtime. And when I saw this yarn on Knit Picks, I was like, oh my goodness. I love heathered yarns. I love heathered yarns so, so much. I feel like they really add to the rustic and handmade quality of a sweater. I feel like it's quite difficult to find a nicely heathered yarn sweater commercially. So I was really, really pleased when I saw this yarn. And then I looked for patterns for this yarn um, and I saw the Petite Knit Louvre and I was like, that's the one, that's the one. And that was important to me because a lot of Petite Knit patterns require mohair, but the Louvre sweater is just knit with Pierre Gint from San Nascarn, which is a DK weight, just 100% wool sweater yarn. And all of my sweaters, excepting one really, really chunky sweater that's knit in like super bulky weight roving yarn, uh, have mohair. So I really wanted something mohairless that would just be a really easy to wear staple type of sweater in my wardrobe. And so that's what this became. I did hold the Knit Picks palette double because it is a fingering weight yarn. So for my size medium, I ended up using less than I ordered. I ordered 13 balls because that was, I think, just one ball more than what was called for in terms of yardage requirements in the pattern. But I only ended up using 10 balls and a bit. I have almost three full balls left over. I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, uh, but ultimately because I purchased the yarn on sale, this was like a $50 Canadian sweater, which is quite good if you consider had I tried to purchase the yarn called for in the pattern, I would have been closer to maybe like $100 Canadian and 
with the petite knit patterns that ask for mohair, I'm often looking at like $250 Canadian to purchase the yarn. So, so it's kind of fun with the petite knit patterns, seeing like what economy kinds of yarns I can substitute in. Like I knit the um, champagne cardigan also in, I use Knit Pick Simply Wool Worsted and they're a loft. So that sweater, which would have been $250, ended up being like just under 100 or just over 100. I can't quite remember, uh, but much, much better. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just beyond pleased with how this came out. However, somebody did tell me that their experience holding Knit Picks palette single was that it ended up pilling a lot. And that was actually something I had been thinking about and wondering about while I was knitting the yarn, I have compared it to Holstgarn Super Soft, which is also just 100% wool, two-ply, fingering weight yarn. Uh, but this yarn I noticed was softer and fluffier, a bit more loftier and um, full than the Holstgarn Super Soft. So I'm very curious to see how much this does end up pilling. I do anticipate I'll be wearing this a lot this season. Um, I do feel it around my neck a little bit, but I can also always just like roll down the collar a bit for a slightly different look if I need a little bit more space to like breathe. So yeah, this is my Louvre sweater by Petite Knit. I really enjoyed working on this project because it was interspersed with a lot of other projects it didn't feel like it was a lot of work and I found that I could make progress on this quite quickly. I really enjoyed working with the yarn. I used the needles called for in the pattern and I got exact gauge uh, with this palette yarn, I should say. So I will probably knit this also again, maybe in a more neutral color and maybe I will do a shorter neckband that I will sort of fold and sew down for a slightly different look. So folks, that's all for today. I really just wanted to give these two finished objects their, their moment in the sun. Um, and because I just did that, that whole frog it or finish it thing, I feel like I am ready to go into the new season with my new fall knitting plans and my new career and my new I'm just ready. I'm just ready for, the, for for new. I'm ready for the season. And that means there's going to be some exciting stuff coming your way. I am thinking I'll probably do another Instagram inspo and intentionality video because folks seem to really like that the first time I did it. And toward the end of the year, I would also really like to do that whole like reviewing my knitwear video people responded very positively to that idea as well. And I think that'll be a really good opportunity to follow up on like the wearability and the durability and how well fit has held up in all of my knitwear. And maybe if my tastes have changed and that's why I'm not wearing stuff much anymore or whatever, I don't know. I think, I think that'll be a very valuable video to see like in addition to my year of knits roundup, whatever you want to call it. So thanks for hanging out. Until I get to see you again, I am wishing you all health and happy knitting. Bye everyone.